בוקר טוב. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, בוקר טוב. Good morning. I needed to unmute the computer. Okay, so today's daf is uh, 66. So we're starting in the last line of uh, 65. 65b, the Mishnah. Akitea, Yotzeh Bekav Shelo. Amputated person with an amputated leg can go out on Shabbat with his uh, kav. Kav. Today they would translate kav as a crutch. But I don't think this this is also a crutch. It's a, it's like something of wood that he puts his leg on. Um, that's this uh, kav. I'm not sure how they translate it in English, but uh, that's a dispute if that's considered a shoe or not. How do they call it? Wooden foot. A wooden foot. Okay. Thank you. Wooden foot. So divrei Rabbi Meir, the Rabbi Yossi Yosef. According to Rabbi Meir, such a wooden foot is like a shoe. So just like anyone is permitted to go out with a shoe. Oh, stump, thank you. Uh, so too, this uh, amputated person can go, can go out with that uh, wooden shoe. Rabbi Yossi prohibits it. Rabbi Yossi says it's not a shoe, it's, uh, it's, an unnes- it's a burden. He does not, uh, according to Rabbi Yossi, he could manage without it. So since he could manage without it, there's no justification to carry it on Shabbat. Unnecessarily. And uh, by the way, the Mishnah mentions that if that wooden shoe has a receptacle for like um, uh, soft things to make it, uh, to make it uh, more comfortable for him, so then it's also tame because without that, it's a flat wooden utensil which uh, does not receive tuma. But if it has a receptacle, so that it even receives, could be subject to Tum'ah. Smochot Shelo. Smochot Shelo, now this refers to a person is amputated in both legs. And he cannot, uh, he, he makes uh, something to uh, lean on for his, uh, whatever is left from his leg. He puts uh, something from leather. He makes something from leather. So the, uh, whatever is left from his leg could, uh, uh, stand on or uh, lean on. So a smuchot shelo tmein midras. That's tmein to at midras because it's uh, something designated to, uh, to for his weight to, to lean on that. But in by Shabbat. With that, there's no dispute. All agree that he can go out without on Shabbat. It's like a shoe. It's like his uh, part of his garment. And um, also, when he nasin by laazara, he can go. With that, to the temple courtyard, to the temple mound, even though the Mishnah says in Brachot that one should not go on the temple mound with shoes, these are not considered shoes. These are uh, like an accessory, but it's not a shoe. Kiseus Machot Shalona, this uh, last thing refers to the most uh, severe um, handicap. He cannot even lean on his legs, because Rashi says is, uh, the case is that his uh, legs are so, uh, uh, do not function. So in order to, uh, to walk, he has to sit and he has to uh, uh, put his weight on his hands with something, and, and that's how he can move forward. So uh, Kiseh, he has such a chair, so these are all Tamei Midras, of course, in case he is a Zav, that contaminates anything he sits on or lies on or stands on, which is designated for that. The Enyots in Bain Bashabat, he should not go out without on Shabbat because it might fall and he might uh, come to pick it up. The Enyich Nasin Bain Bazara, and he should not go with that to the temple courtyard because it's like a shoe. These are like shoes which are forbidden on the temple mount. I'm not sure why the Mishnah mentions Azara. Azara is like the temple courtyard, but even on the temple mount, one should not go with the shoes. Um, the, finally, the Mishnah speaks about uh, something uh, contemporary, uh, masks. Uh, Luktamin. Luktamin, according to uh, 
the accepted interpretation is a mask. A mask that they make for, uh, Rashi says, to frighten children. So Tehorin, that is Tahor, it's not a utensil, it's not a garment, it's not susceptible to Tum'ah. The Enyots in Benan, of course, one should not go out without on Shabbat. There's no uh, permission to carry that on Shabbat. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's the Mishnah. In the beginning of the Mishnah, it, uh, we have a dispute about this one, uh, you could call it a stump or a shoe, uh, a wooden shoe. Uh, one opinion permits it on Shabbat, one opinion prohibits it on Shabbat, and apparently one opinion considers it like a shoe, the other one does not. The thing is that there are two reversed versions of this dispute, and there was a big question, who is it that permitted and who was it to forbade it? Was it Rabbi Meir who permitted it and Rabbi Yossi who forbade it, as in our Mishnah? Or perhaps it was uh, reversed. So, what's the version of the Mishnah? <clears throat> told him, I do not know. So, what's the Allah? I don't know. Okay, Rav Nachman does, does not know. Itmar, uh, Amal Shmuel, Shmuel said, So, Shmuel's version was reversed. The reverse version of our Mishnah. His version was that according to Rabbi Meir, uh, an amputated person may not go out with that wooden shoe, and according to Rabbi Yossi, he may go out with that. And so too, Rav Huna said the same version, the reverse of our Mishnah. So, uh, okay, so Amar Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef said, since the Amar Shmuel ain't a kitea, the Amar Rav Huna ain't a kitea, so we should also adapt that version and say that Rabbi Meir is the one who prohibits it, Rabbi Yossi is the one who permits it, and since typically when we have a dispute between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yossi, Allah follows Rabbi Yossi, so it should be permitted according to this version. Okay, that's what Rabbi Yosef said. But then, Matkifla Rava Bar Shira, what, Lo Shmi Alud, did they not hear? Ha de Matnei Lei Rav Hanan Bar Rava. Lechia Barav, he taught Lechia Barav Kamei de Rav in the presence, presence of Rav, Bekitona Devei Rav. There was a, a small room, Rashi says, a small chamber next to the study hall, and he taught him there. Eina Kitea, Yotze Bakav Shelo, Divrei Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yossi Matir. So he taught him that reversed version, and then Rav, Umach uh, Veli Rav, Rav made him like uh, something with his hand, I'm not sure exactly how he did it to. Reverse the version. He signaled to him to reverse it. So uh, we have a testimony that Rav uh, said that our version, as it appears here, that's the correct version, that Rabbi Yossi prohibits it. And Allah should follow Rabbi Yossi, who prohibits it. Uh, okay, and Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzhak, and the mnemonic to remember this is with Simanech, Simanes Samech Samech. Rabbi Yossi, who has the letter Samech in his name, he's the one who says, Asur, Osir, which also has the letter Samech, Samech, Samech. So that's the way to remember that Obiyos is the one who prohibits it, and that should be the Allah. <coughs> uh, okay, the Av Shmuel, and actually Shmuel and Ravuna, who both said that the version should be reversed, they retract it. And we know that they also say that Obiyos is the one who prohibits it. The Av Shmuel, Hadarbe, Shmuel retracted, Detnan, and that we know from the matter in Masechet Yevamot, and that none, the Mishnah there speaks about Chalitza. And it says, Chalitza besandal she'ino shelo, if the uh, Yevama performed Chalitza, she removed the shoe from the Yevam's uh, foot. And if she did it in a sandal that does not belong to him, or besandal shel etz, or she performed it with a wooden shoe, or shel uh, small be'yamin, or she uh, put the left shoe on the, she took it off the right uh, leg, Chalitza kshera. The Chalitza is valid. Interesting that uh, it speaks about the left uh, shoe, the right leg. Somebody said that in those times they did not have a distinction between the right and the left uh, shoes. They were both uh, the same shape. But here you see that uh, they had it. Um, uh, and, and it was said, Man Tana, who is the Tana who says that a wooden shoe is considered a shoe? Because for Chalitza the Torah requires a shoe. It says, So, who is the one who says that a wooden shoe is considered a shoe? 
רבי מאירי. That is רבי מאיר, that none, as the version of our Mishnah here, הקטעה יוצא בקו שלו דברי רבי מאיר, רבי יוסי יוסר. So here we see that Shmuel retracted the reversed version and he adopts the version as it appears here, and he says that רבי מאיר is the one who considers a wooden shoe to be a shoe, and that's why he permits this amputated person to go without on Shabbat to the public domain, and רבי יוסי is the one who prohibits it, and Allah should follow רבי יוסי who prohibits it. So Rav Shmuel retracted that uh, reversal, and also Rav Ravuna, Hadarbi Ravuna also retracted that uh, reversal. Uh, how do we know that? The Tanya, Sandal Shel Sayadin. Sandal Shel Sayadin, um, it's uh, something that the uh, painters make. And Rashi says they make it to protect their uh, legs from the uh, lime, the lime could burn their skin. So they put a wooden, like a wooden shoe on their leg to protect their legs. Sandal Shel Sayadin, it says Tamei Midras. That is uh, Tamei Midras, they step on it, they, uh, they stand on it. The Isha lets it put, it's fit for Chalitza, it's called a shoe. The Yotzin Bo Beshabbat, Divrei Rabbi Akiva. So according to Rabbi Akiva, a wooden shoe is a, wo- a shoe like uh, for all matters. Ve Lo Odulo. But his colleagues did not admit, did not agree with that. They said that a wooden shoe is not a shoe. And the, the, the question on that writer was, how can you say that his colleagues did not admit? Ve'atanya, or ve'atnan should be, maybe it's a Mishnah, Hodulo. Another source, it says that they, his colleagues did agree with him. So Ravuna explained that, that it's a Tanaic dispute. And the Tanaic dispute, he explains, is according to the version we have in our Mishnah, ve'amar Ravuna, man Hodulo, Rabbi Meir. Those who agreed with him were Rabbi Meir, who says that a wooden shoe is a shoe. Uman lo do lo Rabbi Yossi. The one who did not admit is Rabbi Yossi. So here we see that according to Rav Huna, uh, Rabbi Meir is the one who says that a wooden shoe is a shoe, and one is permitted to go out without on Shabbat, and Rabbi Yossi is the one who prohibits it, and Allah follows Rabbi Yossi. Um, made of straw. Right, so we have, we have indeed uh, two interpretations about this uh, thing of, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, Sayyadin, the, this uh, shoe for the painters. Rashi says it's made of straw. You're right. Rashi says it's made of straw. Um, <clears throat> and now this actually more refers to the following uh, matter. Uh, and that's what Rav Yosef says now. Rav Yosef Amar, man lo hudulu, who is the one who did not admit to Rabbi Akiva? That's Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, uh, that none, as the Mishnah says in Masechet uh, Keilim, Kaveret shel Kash, Ushfoferet shel Kanim. That's the version that appears here in the Gemara, Kaveret shel Kash, Ushfoferet shel Kanim. But the Vilna Gaon says it should be the version as it appears in the Mishnah there in Masechet Keilim, Machzelet Akash, a straw mat, Ushfoferet Akash, or a straw uh, tube. Straw tube. Uh, Rabbi Akiva metame. The Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri metaher. So here we have a dispute. If this thing made of straw, is it uh, tame or tahor? Could it receive tum'a or not? So according to Rashi, the interpretation is that uh, sandal shel sayadin, this uh, sandal of the painter, is made of straw. And according to Rashi, the basic dispute is, is straw considered wood or not? A utensil made of straw. Is that considered a wooden utensil, or is it uh, like another uh, category of utensil? So, uh, according to uh, Rabbi, Aki, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, it's not considered a wooden utensil. It's not. Uh, it's not. Cannot receive tumah. And uh, according to uh, the first opinion, uh, Rabbi Akiva, straw is like wood, and any utensil made of straw is like made of wood, which could be susceptible to tumah in case it has a receptacle. Um, okay, Amar Mar, Sandal Shel Sayadin Tamei Midras, so this uh, Braita uh, said, or this also in the Mishnah, in Eiduyot, so that said that this Sandal Shel Sayadin, this wooden shoe of the painters, uh, could receive Tum'at Midras. Midras, because uh, anything is de- which is designa- designated to stand on, or to sit on, or to lie on, could be Tamei Midras. And the question is, how come? But it's not, it's not made for walking. 
it's, the purpose is not to walk on it. The purpose is just to protect the uh, leg of the painter. That's the question. Um, the answer is that uh, even though the main purpose of this uh, shoe is just to protect his leg and not to walk with it, but still the painter walks with it, with it until he arrives at his house. That's what the Gemara says here. But the Tosfat wonder, what, 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 what's the question? Why does the Gemara assume that it's not designated for that? Even though it's a, it's a working shoe, it's, he uses it only when he paints, but at the time he paints, he does wear it, and he does stand on it. And he doesn't stand in one place, he walks when he paints. So what's the question? Of course he walks with that, and that's, uh, that's the purpose of this uh, shoe, to, uh, to wear it, to walk with it. So why should it not be Tamei Midras? Why, why does the Gemara wonder about this? So uh, the Tashvat have two answers. One is that um, it's not made like, a, the purpose of this is not to be like a shoe. Uh, they say that it's uh, it's mainly made like a, what they call a spachtel to uh, to smear the uh, the lime on the wall, and sometimes the painter would occasionally take it to uh, protect his leg, but uh, but it's not really a shoe, and that's why the Gemara wonders why is it a mamed glass? It's it's the primary purpose of it is just to uh, use it as a tool to paint the house and not to stand on it. So the answer is that since he walks with it every day back home, so it's like uh, designated also for to, to stand on. And that's why it's Tamei Midras. That's one interpretation of the Tosfot. And the other interpretation is it's made not to stand on it, to, it's like to cover the shoes. It's like uh, an outer shoe on top of the shoe to protect his uh, shoes. And, uh, and so the assumption was it's not uh, made for walking with it, just uh, while he's uh, painting, it's just a protection for the shoes. Right, exactly. It's like a rubber overshoes on a rainy Shabbat. So, uh, so here the question is not about Shabbat. The question here is about the Tumat Midras. Is it designated? Is it something designated to stand on? So those uh, rubber overshoes are, of course, uh, designated to stand on them. They make him for them. But this uh, thing of the painter, the, the the assumption was that it's not made to walk on. It's just a while he's painting to protect his, uh, it's like an overshoot to protect his shoes from the line. So that's why the question was that uh, it should not be Tamei Midras. It's not made to walk with. But the answer was that he also walks with it every day home. So it's like a shoe. It's uh, designated to stand on and that's why it's Tamei Midras. Um, okay, then the Mishnah also says, if this uh, kav, this uh, wooden shoe of the amputated person, which is made of wood, and it's, if, if it's flat, cannot receive tumah, but if it has a receptacle for these uh, soft uh, things, so then it's a uh, tameh, because it's a wooden utensil, which is a receptacle. Now we have a dispute if now it's also tameh midras or not. All agree that it's tamei tumat met, or any type of tumah, uh, through contact, or sheretz, or met, or any type of tumah. It could be tamei, it's a wooden utensil, it's not flat, so there's no doubt it could receive tumah, as the Mishnah says. But according to Abaye, ve'en tamei midras. It is not tamei in tumat midras. Why? Because uh, according to Abaye, this amputated person does not really lean on that I'm not sure if lean is the right uh, term. He does not uh, need to support himself with that uh, wooden thing. Because we talk about a person who is only amputated in one leg. So he mainly relies on his healthy leg. And uh, in his uh, other leg, he just uh, like temporarily uh, relies on that uh, wooden shoe. But it's not considered midras. The first thesis has a cup-like part that stumps fits uh, first there's a cup-like part that stump fits into it um, ah. so it's uh, you say that stump stump is not the uh, is not the right term well, uh, stump is the end of the amputated leg uh, right, okay, yeah. so this... Uh, Actually, it's only holds the... It's the prosthesis in place. 
Okay. Self -transcendent. Right. So this first thesis is, is is according to Abaye, it's not it's not something that is a stamp uh, relies on mainly because he mainly relies only on his uh, on his healthy leg, and that's why this first thesis is does not receive tumat uh, midras because uh, for something to be tamay midras, you need is the weight of the person to uh, to be on that. And that should be the purpose of that thing. And here the purpose of this uh, first thesis is not for his weight mainly to uh, rely on that. It's just uh, like a temporary help when he takes yeah, his Yeah, but step. the, the uh, person walks on it. Yeah, he walks on it. I mean, does put weight on it. Each step he takes with that side, it's weight on it. So, right, so I, I understand according to Abaye that even though he walks on it, it's, it's only like an assistant. It's, it's not... That he, he, he mainly walks on his healthy leg, and he's only using this uh, first thesis as a like a semi support for his other leg. But it's like, like a cane, right? So it's not it's not something that is uh, really relying on, and therefore it's not a main midras. Oh, so it's for the rest of the leg as well as support. So uh, according to Abaye, it's like a temporary support, like a semi-support. It's not really a... Uh, that, that's a dispute now between Abaya and Rava. So according to Abaya, it's not Tamei Midras, the Rava Amar after Tamei Midras. It seems like they, they argue about the uh, reality. What is it designated for? Is it designated to uh, rely on or to support himself or just uh, like uh, to assist him in uh, making the step? And now each one brought a proof from another matter. So, Amar uh, Rava, Mena Amin Allah, Rava says, how do I know that it's Tamei Midras? Did not, we have a Mishnah in Masechet Beitzah, and the Mishnah there says, Agala Shel Katan. Agala Shel Katan, there's also a dispute here between Rashi and Tosfot, What's, what is it? According to Rashi, it's like a stroller. According to Tosfot, it's a walker that they make for a a little uh, child, let's say one year old, is just learning how to walk. So they make like a agala that he, uh, he walks with that and he sometimes leans on it and his weight is, uh, su it supports him. Because uh, in Rashi's uh, interpretation that it's a stroller, that's what they ask, of course. It's, uh, there's no question, why, why would the Mishnah even bother to say that it's Tamei Midras? Obviously, it's like a chair for the, for the baby. So uh, he sits on it, it's designated to sit on. So if that child is a Zav, of course, that seat, and that stroller should be Tamei Midras. So that's why Tosh would say that it's a, a walker, that he, he walks with that, and he sometimes also leans on it. And uh, because of that, the Mishnah says it's Tamei Midras. So here we see that even though it's not something that was made mainly to, a, to lean on, but since he occasionally does lean on it with the weight of his body, so it's Tamei Midras. So too, this uh, this uh, kav, this uh, wooden shoe, even though the uh, amputated person usually does not, uh, his weight does not uh, is not supported by this amputated leg and with this uh, le uh, wooden shoe, but since sometimes he would lean on that, he would be supported by that, so it's enough reason for it to be tamay midras. That's Rava's proof. When, and Abaye says that there's no comparison between the cases. The Abaye Amar, Hatam Samich there, that uh, little baby, little child, actually leans on it. His weight is supported by that uh, stroller or walker, whatever it is. But here, this amputated person is not really supported by this uh, wooden thing. That's how Abaye understands it. The Abaye himself found a proof from another example. Where do I say it from? The Tanya. Yeah. Old people's cane. If a wooden cane is completely taho, there's no uh, tum'ah because it's a flat wooden utensil. There's no receptacle, so it's not subject to any type of tum'ah and not even tum'at midras. Even though the old people sometimes do lean on that uh, stick, on that cane. So here, here you see that even though sometimes, occasionally, he would uh, be supported by that cane, but since the main function, the main purpose is not to support him, just to, uh, for other purposes, so uh, it's not the main midras. And Rabbi says that there's no comparison between that cane and this uh, wooden shoe of the amputated person because 
ורבה הטעם לתירוץ איזו סוגיה, אבל הדיר, the purpose of that cane is just to help him in his uh, steps. רש"י uh, says because his legs are trembling, uh, he does not really need it to, uh, to support his, his weight. But here, this uh, wooden shoe, the purpose is to support him, and his weight is supported by that wooden shoe, and that's why according to, Abay, to Rava, it's a uh, Tamei Midras. So uh, that's a dispute. Allah, of course, follows Rava. Can I ask a question? Sure. Um, so from the beginning, we, we only, we're only talking about a, a wooden leg that has some kind of receptacle, because if, if it doesn't, there's no way it can become richly impure. Right. But this refers to other all types of tum'ah. No wooden utensil without a receptacle can be tamay, unless it's tum'at midras. Midras, that could be even without a receptacle. Because for midra, midras, midras is a special type of tum'ah that uh, for that, those people that have tum'ah issues from their body, like zav, zava, yoledet, uh, nida, so such people have a special type of tumah that anything designated to sit on or to lie on or to stand on, so if they sit or stand, if their weight is on it, that, be, that itself becomes ava tumah. And there the, you, you do not need this condition of receptacle, like a, a flat chair, a flat wooden bench, or a, a bed. So that could be tamay midras, even though there's no receptacle. No. So that's... This is rabbinical. No, no, it's a biblical concept. It's a biblical... It's an explicit verse. The whole merkav asher irkav alav azav yitma. The whole akli asher yeshev alav yitma. Any any utensil, any bed, any anything he lies or sits on or reclines on becomes tamei. Right. Okay. So then the Mishnah also said kiseu smachot shelo. Now this last part of the Mishnah refers to the most severe, severely. Uh, Amputated person who has uh, both his legs were amputated and he cannot even uh, support himself in, with his legs, so he needs to uh, be supported by his hands. That he, uh, that's how he walks with his uh, hands. He supports his weight by his hands and he also has a small chair that he sits on. And the Mishnah says that that chair and those uh, supporters, Tmein uh, Midras. So these leather things he has at the um, end of his, uh, whatever is left from his legs, are uh, like shoes, like le leather shoes, and as such he should not go with them to the temple courtyard. Now Tani Tana, there was a brighter that said, that he may go with that to the temple courtyard. So Rabbi Yochanan told him, it's a mistake. I teach that a woman can even make chalitza with that leather shoe. You say that you can go with that to the temple courtyard. If it's considered a shoe, that chalitza could be performed with it. So obviously, one should not enter the temple courtyard with such a shoe because that's forbidden. And therefore, Tani, you should change the version and say that one should not go with that to the temple courtyard. Uh, and now we have uh, three interpretations for the end of the Mishnah that spoke about luktemin, luktemin teora, that's something taho, not, cannot be tamay, and also, of course, should not go out with that on Shabbat. So what is that? My luktemin, there are three interpretations. One is, Amar Rabbi Abahu, Chamara de Achpa. So Rashi says it's like a donkey that they make uh, and they carry it on their shoulders. It says that the clowns, uh, make that, and it appears like the donkey rides over the, the clown. Yeah, so that's one interpretation, which is not uh, tameh and uh, should not go out without on Shabbat. The Rava Bar Papa Amar Kshirei. Kshirei. So um, Rashi does not really explain so uh, precisely, but Tosfot say in the name of the Aruch that this refers to this high uh, wood like wooden legs that they have for these, sometimes they have these uh, people with, that they uh, make us uh, stilts. Okay, stilts, that's how they call it. That they make these high uh, wooden legs that they uh, appear like uh, higher people. So these also, uh, these are kshure, that's one interpretation. The rava baravunamal palme. Palme are masks, as Rashi explained in the Mishnah. 
that it's a mask made for to frighten children and uh, one should not take it on Shabbat to the public domain and it cannot receive Tum'ah. Okay, the next Mishnah speaks about Habanim, little boys, Yotzin Bikshanim. They can go out on Shabbat to the public domain with nuts. Kshanim, uh, nuts, I mean K N O T. Um, and the Gemara explains what that is. Uvnei Melachim Bezagin. And the princes, uh, princes are like, yeah, sons of kings. So they can go out with bells, uh, bells, uh, golden bells for beauty. They can go with that to the public domain. And the Mishnah says, V'cholodam, actually anybody can go with these things. But the sages spoke in uh, what's common. The common thing was that the princes went with these golden bells and the little boys went with these uh, nuts. And now the Gemara explains, Maik Sharim, what are these nuts? So, Amar Adam, Mari, Amar Av Nachman Bar Baruch, Amar Av Ashi Bar Avin, Amar Av Yehuda, Kishurei Fu'ah. This is... Uh, they take this uh, plant, I'm not sure what pu'a is, it's the name of a plant, and they uh, tie it like a necklace, uh, and it cures. Rashi says it does not know what illness that can cure, but it uh, it can cure something. So, uh, so it's like an amulet, just like an amulet can cure something. So this is like a necklace with uh, some uh, herb or something uh, that cures. Um, okay, but then uh, how does it cure? Amar Abaye, Amar Ali M. So Abaye reports in the name of his uh, M is not really his biological mother because Abaye, when he was born, his mother died. So he was an orphan from the moment he was born. Uh, M usually refers to the woman who uh, raised him. And she taught him many things. And one of the things that she taught him was Tlata Mukme. If you make three knots so that... Uh, stops the illness from getting worse. Chamisha, Masu, if you make five knots, it even cures. Shiva, if you make seven knots, afilu lechshafim ale, that is even good against witchcraft. So that's uh, the thing about this. Uh, however, there is a condition here, very difficult condition. Amar of Achabar Yaakov, this can only cure and can only work against the witchcraft. Vehu delo chazi, Shimsha, that this uh, necklace will not see the sun, the siara, and not see the moon, the lo chazimitra, and not see rain, the lo shmi alei kol barzela, the kal tar negolta, the kal nigre, and not hear the sound of iron, not the sound of a hen, and not the sound of steps of people. So, because it's so difficult to avoid these uh, things, Amar of Nachman Baritzrak, Nafal Puta Bevira, this. Uh, <coughs> This cure now fell to a pit. Nobody can be careful, uh, can be uh, avoid these things, so it uh, doesn't work. But anyway, this interpretation is now rejected because how can we say that the Mishnah permits little boys to go with this uh, necklace? And if that's the case, so my iria banim afilu banot nami. So why little boys and not little girls? Girls also need uh, to cure their illnesses. And also, my why, why small ones? The Mishnah speaks about banim ktanim, like uh, small children. dalim nami, even adults. If it's uh, such a good cure, like uh, an adult is permitted to go with an amulet, should be permitted to go with uh, with this uh, necklace. So therefore, we say that this uh, these sharim, these knots, are something else, which is only good for little boys and not for little girls and not for adults. This is a cure for, it's a psychological cure. In case of a little child who is um, he's very much connected to his father and he cannot separate from his father. If his father leaves, he, he starts to cry. So what, uh, now Rashi says that this is only a problem of boys because Rashi says, something uh, interesting. It's not relevant for girls because the father does not like them so much from the outset, so uh, they don't miss him anyway. <laughs> That's what Rashi says. So only little boys miss their father and, uh, and they, uh, they have to make something. Uh, instead of sending him to the psychologist, they, uh, they make something to cure that uh, thing 
So what should be done? נוטל רצועה ממנעל של ימין, the father should take a strap from his right shoe, take the lace, uh, lace of his right shoe, וקושר לו בשמאל and tie it on the left hand of the child, and that will cure the problem. It can save the fee for the psychologist. He didn't meet my children or grandchildren. <laughs> well, maybe today, I think today things are different than they used to be in those times. But uh, <clears throat> that's the remedy, and, that, and that's why the little child is permitted to go with that, because that's what helps him overcome that uh, 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 longing to his father. Amar Rav Nachman Bar Yitzhak, V'simanech Tfilin, the mnemonic to remember it is Tfilin, just like Tfilin you tie on the left arm, so to uh, this shoelace must be tied on the left arm of the child. If you make it the opposite, if you take the lace of the left shoe and tie it on the right hand of the child, that's dangerous. He might become too, he might uh, long his father too much and might uh, become uh, ill with that. So uh, only the left, the right lace on the left hand of the child. Uh, okay. Amar Avin, ve Amar. אבין בר הונה, אמר רב חנה בר גוריה, סיכופי קאסה, הטיבורי בשבתא שפיר דמי. One is permitted to do what's called בנקס, how do you call that? כוסות רוח. You take a cup with the hot water, you pour out the hot water, when there's steam, steam in the, in the cup, you put it on somebody's uh, uh, abdomen, and it can pull the, uh, the skin, and that's, uh, and that's, can... it's a suction, suction. Suction cup, okay, thank you. Suction cup, right. So, uh, so that is permitted on Shabbat. It's not considered uh, cupping, yeah. It's not considered uh, uh, medicine. Medicine is forbidden on Shabbat, but this is not, uh, it's not medicine, it's just uh, something good to do. Yeah, there's a, excuse me, there's an expression that is called a titan bankus. Oh, exactly, bankus. It's, like, it's, like, it's like suctioning the dead, it's not, like, it's not working. Right. <laughs> See, no, it might work even for, it might work, but uh, it's not medicine. Because it's not medicine, it's permitted on Shabbat. Um, and also, another thing permitted on Shabbat, Amar Avin Baruna, Amar Avchav Barduria, Mutar Lasuch Shemenu Melech B'Shabbat. One is permitted to uh, anoint or to rub a, a combination, a mixture of oil and salt on Shabbat. And what is that done for? Um, uh, I mean, in those times, what she says, when they went to the study hall, they gave them wine to drink, and sometimes they became drunk. Now, if a person becomes drunk, so for most of them, nothing was done. They were just left drunk until they, uh, uh, they had them, uh, got out of it themselves. But the important students, they made a remedy for them to, uh, to uh, de... How do you call it? To, uh, to uh, take out the drunkenness from them. So uh, like Rav Huna, Mibay Rav, when Rav Huna came from the study hall of Rav, the Rav, Mibay Rav Bichia, and Rav came from the study hall of Rabbi Chia. The Rabbi Chia, Mibay Rabbi, when they were intoxicated, they brought oil and salt, they mixed it together, they rubbed it on their uh, uh, palm of their hand and uh, their uh, bottom of their foot, their feet, like uh, reflexology. So, uh, and that helps. Uh, uh, De-intoxicate. How would you say that? De to de-intoxicate them. Um, Sober them up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they drank it all right. So they drank it and really sobered them up. Yeah, and they said, and they have to say, I'm like, Yechid the Tzil, Ha Mishcha, just like this oil becomes clearer and clearer. Leitzil Chamre, the plan of Abulinitas. So let the wine of so and so, the son of this woman, be clear and. Uh, <clears throat> He'll stop uh, being drunk. Now, if this does not work, there are other remedies. Uh, did, 
Okay, detoxify, thank you. Detoxify. So uh, what are uh, other ways to detoxify a person? Ve'ilo, mighty shia dedana, bring a cover of a barrel. Uh, I think usually it was made of maybe of wax. Ve'sharilei b'maya, soak it in water. Ve'amar, and you should say, ki'eichi de'leitzil ha'ishia, just like this becomes clear, it dissolves in the water. Leitzil chamrei de'flani abav flanita, so to let the wine of the sober up, let, let the wine... Uh, become clear and let him be detoxified. Okay. One is permitted to strangle on Shabbat. Now this is not to strangle a person. Rashi says it's in a special uh, situation where it says something in the, uh, in the neck went out of its place and uh, it fell into the throat. So you have to hang the person with his head so that his uh, thr throat is like, uh, it's like, like an act like strangling, but to, uh, to uh, it's a remedy for something. I'm not sure how to explain this. How do you call that? Like a chiropractor. Right, like a chiropractor, but uh, this is like for a specific uh, situation. So that's permitted on Shabbat. Also, it's not considered medicine, which is usually forbidden on Shabbat. This is fine. Another permitted thing, Rashi says that sometimes when babies are born, so their limbs go out of their place, and there's a need to fix it, to put it back to place. So they used to uh, wrap the child with the uh, clothes, and tie it with a, a wide belt, and that helps uh, put back the limbs in place. That's permitted on Shabbat, in case a child is born on Shabbat. Rob? Yeah? Yeah, we know today with babies that are born, if their hips are, hips are dislocated, put them in a diaper, with a big diaper between the legs to keep the uh -huh. legs turned out, so that the hip goes back into place. Right, so that's a, that could be a... That could be done on Shabbat. Yeah, it's not a remedy for choking. It's a remedy for something else. Yeah, it's a remedy for something else. I'm, I'm, Rashi says what's the situation. It's uh, something that mifreket uh, tzavar. Something fell into the throat and there's a, the remedy is to do an act which appears like strangling, but it's not really strangling. It's just to straighten something in the, in the throat. Uh, like like he said, like ch chiropractor do, does. Uh, now Rav Papa Matni Banim, Rav Papa taught in plural, Banim, that both the teachings that spoke about little children were told in the name of Avin Baruna, in the name of Rav Chana Bar uh, That's Rav Papa's version, but Rav Zvid Matni Ben, Rav Zvid taught only one thing he said about a little child. Rav Papa Matni Banim v'tarvayu Matni Lube Avin Baruna. So Rav Papa taught both things in the name of Avin Baruna, both the thing of uh, this uh, little child that misses his father, and this thing about uh, uh, to uh, bring back the uh, thing of uh, the limbs of a baby on Shabbat. The Rav Zvid Matni Ben Kamaita Matni Be Avin Baruna. Rav Zvid taught the first one in the name of Avin Baruna, but this last one Vayi Matni La Be Rabba Bar Barchana. The Amar Rabba Bar Barchana. He's the one who said that you can wrap the child, the baby, and bring his limbs back to place. Now, another thing Abaya says in the name of the woman who raised him, Minyane, Rashi says, refers to anything you need to say to whisper in case there is a sick person, and sometimes there is a need to, uh, to say something and sometimes, and you, you typically have to say it a few times that uh, whatever there's a need to, it's called the lachash, a whisper. So uh, when you mention the sick person's name, you have to mention him, so and so, the son of so and so, his mother's name. And that's actually today's custom that when we pray for sick people, you mention the name of the person and the name of his mother or her mother. That's in case you pray for a sick person. All the nuts. Anything you have to tie, you tie it on the left. 
ואמר אביי, אמרה לי אם, כל מניין אדם מפרשי כדם מפרשי. All these things you need to say to whisper, if there's a, in the prescription, there's a number of instructions, how many times you have to say that. So, 40 וחד זינה, the default is, recite it 41 times. If there's any other instructions, you say it, uh, as it says, three times or seven times, but the default is 21 time, 41 times. Maybe that's because the Shema Mephorash was 42 letters. And here it's like one less. So, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's the... Uh, it's a Kabbalistic idea. Yeah, I'm not sure what's the reason for 41. There's also a dispute, what was Shema Mephorash? Uh, there's an opinion it was uh, 42 letters, 72 letters. It's, uh... Okay, another... Uh, you can call it a super... Uh, Superstitious, uh, another such a remedy which is not so uh, conventional nowadays, and that's Tanur Rabbanan Yotzin Be'even Tkuma Be'Shabbat. Even Tkuma is a special stone that pregnant women carry, and that they say that prevents miscarriage. So a, a pregnant woman can go without on Shabbat, just like an amulet. Just like an amulet works, and people can go without on Shabbat because it's the... It's the common way of walking uh, even during the week, carrying it. It's like one of, part of your uh, adornment, your jewelry, your garments. So you can carry that uh, stone also, the pregnant woman. According to Rabbi Meir, you can even carry not the original Tkuma stone. But you can carry any object that weighs the same, exactly the same weight, which is also uh, helpful in uh, preventing uh, miscarriage. And uh, uh, and, the, and the permission is not only for a woman who already experienced once a miscarriage, even a woman who never miscarried is permitted to walk with that to, uh, because she's afraid she might miscarry. So uh, she can do that. And, and not only if, if the woman is known to be pregnant is she permitted to walk with that, even if she does not even know that she's pregnant, She can't carry that stone because who knows, she might, uh, she might be pregnant without knowing that and might miscarry without, without knowing it. So uh, it's always good to have such a stone with you to avoid the uh, just in case. Uh, in case you take the uh, other object that weighs exactly the same weight, it's, it only works if it's naturally possesses exactly the same weight. If you need to artificially change it, to adjust it to the weight of the Evan Kuma, then uh, it doesn't work. Uh, now, Baya Baya comes an inquiry, Mishkal de Mishkal Mai. What about a secondary thing that weighs exactly the same as that secondary thing that weighs exactly the same as the original Evan Kuma? So, uh, does that work or not? That remains takeo. Now uh, we have a few things that you better not try at home. Uh, it says that there is a cherem, a ban, against trying the medicine that appears in the Gemara. Maybe it was good for those times, but nowadays we have the other uh, types of uh, medicine. So it says, says, my mother, the one who raised me, told me, what if a person has a fever for one day? So uh, the remedy is Lishkol Zuza Chivra. You should take a coin of Zuz, very new, a very new coin, white, new. Velezi lemilchata. Go to the place where they make salt. There's uh, wide uh, pools of water. Velitkol mitkele milcha, and take salt exactly the same weight as that coin. Velitzayre bechalala devei tzavara benira banka, and uh, make a necklace with the uh, nira balka, like uh, hair, strands of hair, make a necklace and tie that salt to your neck in, in a necklace, and that will help you uh, overcome that fever of one day. <clears throat> the ilo, if that does not help you, so uh, go to a junction. If you you'll encounter a large ant, that carries something. So then, Lishkali, take that ant, put it into a copper uh, 
cane or something, a small narrow uh, copper thing, and uh, and seal it be avara with lead, velistame be shitin gushpanke and seal it with sixty uh, seals. And she says, "Not uh, you don't have to do sixty. I can do uh, uh, many many seals like uh, uh, wax on the lead and then uh, pitch and then uh, whatever clay." However, you can seal it with many layers. Then, levarzule, shake it, belidare, then carry it, belayvale, and say to the end, teonach alayu teonach alach. I exchange the burden with you. You take my burden, I take your burden. And then uh, the fever will hopefully go to the end, and the person will only have to carry the burden of the end. But ve'ilo, uh, if that does not work. Lishkol Kuza, I'm sorry, Amal Le Rav Acha, Brei De Rav Huna Le Rav Ashi, but Vedilma Inish Ashkechei Vi Yifzak Dei. How can you take, say to the end that you want to exchange the burden with the end? But what if somebody else before you took that end and yet another more severe illness, and his illness is now on the end? That's the burden of the end. <laughs> so you might uh, receive an exchange. Who knows? Maybe coronavirus something. Huh? Who knows what the end this end is carrying? <laughs> so uh, better better not say that you want to take the burden of the end. Rather, <clears throat> say to the end, my load and your load is all on you. You take my burden and your burden. Okay, very low. But what if this does not work? If it does not uh, encounter such an end, so lishkol kuza chadeta take a new uh, vessel of. Uh, Kuza, like an uh, earthenware cup, the, a, new, a new one. The lazy Lenara, go to the river. The lay Malay and say to the river, Nahara, Nahara, river, river. Uz van Kuza de Maya, lend me a cup of water, Leorcha de Iklali, to the way that uh, now I have to go to. The Leadal Shav Zimne al Reishe, turn that cup with water seven times over your head. The Lishadian Lahore, throw it back on your back. And say back to the river, Nahara, Nahara, river, river. Take back the water you gave me. The Orcha, the Iklali, that way that uh, came uh, on me. Beyome Ata, on that day it came. Beyome Azal, and that way it went. And hopefully the fever will go away with that uh, water. And uh, yeah, but as we said, nowadays I better take uh, uh, Akamol, Nurofen, whatever helps uh, for fever. And that was the medical knowledge in those times. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I think, uh, yeah, yesterday also. It started, since uh, Saturday night, Motzei Shabbat, it uh, goes beyond 40 minutes. Yeah, I'm not sure. But, uh, okay, we can thank the Zoom. But hopefully next week we're going back to uh, Shir Hadash. But we might continue also... Might continue with the uh, as well with Facebook and Zoom also uh, even there we'll see if there's a demand. Zoom is so busy they didn't notice. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, only for Would that. You continue family. with Zoom from distant people. Uh, I think we'll try. We'll try to continue. Yeah. Please, please. Okay. Okay. Yes, Okay. Thank you. Call to. Have a good day. Thank you.